Can you please state your name, age, and where you're from? My name is Chris Dunlap. I live in Cordova, and I am 72. And so, um, can you tell us a little bit about your childhood and like where you were born and etc.? I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. I was raised in Ogden, Utah. And I lived in Utah till I was 23. And from there, did you go to college somewhere or? Nope, didn't go to college. And do you have any siblings that were with you in Utah or? Yeah, I had, um, I'm the oldest of four. I had uh, two brothers and a sister. Cool. And so what was life, childhood like in Utah and then? Well, I lived in northern Utah. It was really pretty. Um, and we lived up in Ogden up on the uh, we called it the bench, and uh, so I pretty much had free reign of climbing in up in the woods in the shrub oak and uh, where all the rocks are and uh, playing in the canal and yep cool yeah it was so, fun it was a fun childhood nice yeah. so what made you decide to come to Cordova? I first came to Cordova in 1966. I turned 20 here. <laughs> and uh, I came on October 22nd. There was five feet of snow on the ground. The uh, planes hadn't gotten in for, oh, five days at all. And back then, there was no jets. It was just a uh, prop, two prop plane that flew out of Juneau. There was a jet to Juneau, and then you flew out of there. And I remember thinking everything was just white, and gorgeous, and I thought, well, that's what Alaska is supposed to be. <laughs> and so how did you hear about Cordova? My um, former husband was uh, stationed here in the Coast Guard. On the Sedge was the name of the ship at that time. And there was no housing here for Coast Guard families, so uh, we just had to find our own. The house I lived in was all torn down now, but it was just, just a little tiny, little tiny house I was able to rent. Um, that back then, there was no uh, paved streets. The sidewalks were still all boardwalk. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very, like I say, I turned 20. So then I left and came back to Juneau in 1978. A friend of mine lived there, so I came back there, and then in 1970, oh, I'm sorry, 73, and in 78, I came back to Cordova. Mm -hmm. And so, why did you leave, and where'd you go? Which time? <laughs> the, fir the first time in 1973, you said you left Cordova. Oh, I came, I came back to Juneau from... From Cordova. Oregon. So, uh, let's see, let's Cordova. back up. Okay, so I was, I'm <laughs> sorry if I missed you up. I was... I was in Cordova, 66 into 67, went back to Utah, left Utah, moved to Oregon, from Oregon to Juneau, with seven boxes of everything I owned, $40 and two kids. <laughs> and from there, uh, in 78, came back to Cordova. And why did you come back to Cordova? You were just drawn to it? My husband um, had got a job. We, well, Juneau was 13,000 people. It was way too many people. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wanted to come to a place smaller. And I said, Cordova's a great place. So we moved here. My husband was an electrician. And uh, he got a job here down at St. Elias Cannery. So how come you left originally then? You could go back to Utah. Um, my With your kids. former husband was... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through he was restationed. Mm -hmm. so. Oh. And so, can you tell us a little bit about your kids? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. little. Who's one little? As much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop you if it gets too long. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, my firstborn is uh, my son named Max, and he lives in Homer at the moment, and uh, he loves. Fishing and hunting and outdoor stuff. He is very good at that. Likes doing that stuff. Um, and let's see. He didn't finish school here. He got his GED. 
uh, and uh, he's lived in Cordova quite a bit. He did a lot of fishing. Yeah, he likes to gold mine, stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, my daughter uh, didn't graduate from here. She graduated from Mercer Island High School, but she she was in one of the Darla's original problem solving. They, her team won second place in the country. I understand that that uh, that trophy isn't around anymore. It was, it was. Oh yeah. Gotten rid of. What happened? The school when the school decided there was too many trophies, so they got rid of it. It was, it was just the second place. That's the highest place. our team has ever. Really? Placed ever. Yeah. So it's uh, anyway, second place international trophy. What's your Lisa. Yeah. And so, so what was your occupation or what is your occupation? When I came in back in 78, I got a job with the school district teaching swimming and water safety with Jerry Benzak. And I did that. I took a couple of breaks, but I did it off and on for over 20 years. So I retired from that. I also had a job with the Forest Service, and I worked on the Copper River Delta for 27 summers. Yeah, taking care of the uh, recreation places. They had all kinds of names for it, but I just said I was janitor of the forest. <laughs> Which and, fit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so do you have any favorite experiences from any of those 27 summers, or any favorite experience in general? Uh, let's see. Well, being on the Delta every day was pretty wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, too many to... To name, actually, mm -hmm. just being out there every day. Never got tired of it. Mm -hmm. Never got tired of driving the child's glacier. Mm -hmm. well, do that maybe anywhere. three times a week. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot. And so, have you traveled anywhere outside of? Alaska when I was Oregon? forty-three, I sold most of everything I had, stored some stuff, and went to Seattle, bought a van, and traveled around the country for just about a year and a half. And uh, yeah, I really like that. Um, not been out of country, but there's a lot to see in America. Oh, yeah. Lots to see. One of my favorite places was Hills Canyon. Perfect. That was going to be my next question. What's your favorite place in the world? Or? Yeah. Did you know Hills Canyon is a quarter mile deeper than the Grand Canyon? I did not. Yep. Yeah, it is. And because it's such on such a narrow river, when you're down in the canyon looking up, it's just this little tiny sliver of sky. Wow. Yeah. The sun probably never shines. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, that's a pretty spectacular place. Cool. Yeah. Where is it? It's uh, on the Snake River that is eastern Washington and Oregon and mm -hmm. western Idaho. And you said that was one of your favorite places that yes. you were on yes. your trip? Uh -huh. That and, so, and the main coast is which my daughter yeah. is living now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what about... <laughs> Did you have a name of your van, of the van that you traveled in? Oh, yeah, Moon Shadow. Moon Shadow? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, isn't that a song? <laughs> yep, it is. What's that guy's name? Cat Stevens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You already knew that. I did, but you I think already it's knew really that. Cool. And why did you paint the outhouses all around the whole country? Oh, moons! Yes, outhouses need moons, you know, because they're just this little building, and you know, you might think it's a, a shed or you know, a smokehouse or something. So it really needs a moon on to, to signify. To signify, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, what's one of your favorite places in Cordova specifically? Oh, Twenty Mile. Cordova. Yep. And why is that? Oh, because there's all those, uh, oh, what do they call it? Haystacks, the bedrock that the glacier left behind. And, uh, and years and years ago, I think before the earthquake, you could see clear to the ocean. So it's just, a, you know, just a nice, beautiful place, and there's lots of wildflowers along the road. Um, so how has Cordova changed since you've come here compared to now? Well, there's paved streets now, and there's only one wooden boardwalk that I know of. Yeah, like. you mentioned the boardwalks. Yeah, it's only one wooden one. I think that's in front of uh, Ramey's old mm -hmm. building. Yeah. 
And uh, let's see what else has changed. Well, you know, well, then they've got the high school and uh, uh, ball fields. You said built have the high school? a little bit. What's that? You said, what did you say about the high the school? The high school was built in 67. Hmm. CHS? Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a road to um, out to the ferry dock. That was, uh, if you look there, uh, as you're going out there, you go through the big cut of rock, and that was all. My mother and grandmother came up to visit once, and a friend said, well, you can walk around out there on the, along the tide, but you've got to be back by noon because the okay, tide would come in. Well, we didn't know it much about tides and so we were having so much fun we waited and wait you know waited a little bit too long and so the tide mm -hmm. came and caught us we couldn't get around the rocks but this guy over on the dock he had a boat called the mud dauber and uh he saw our plight so he came and rescued so i have these pictures of my grandmother who was you know, oh, I don't know probably in her 60s and crawling up on the bow of this boat <laughs> So let's see what else has changed. Well, I remember in 67, the, the first jet came in, and the whole town went out to watch this <laughs> jet land. I thought it was kind of silly. I didn't go. Wish I had a yeah. Was there a TV? No TV. The people square danced. Uh, the kids would play games uh, while the parents were square dancing and playing cards, lots of cards card games. Uh, yeah, there were the Elks and the Moose were big uh, attractions for mm -hmm. a lot of people, big attendance. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so um, from Rob, this information I've just <laughs> heard, which I already knew, but um, you had an airplane of your own, apparently. My husband and I had an airplane, right, and that was a real highlight of living here. Is my husband would call up from work and say, do you want to go out to dinner? And I'd say, yeah. Well, what that meant was get a picnic dinner ready and we'll go out to the beach and have, have dinner. So, yeah, that was a real highlight. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. And that yeah. airplane's owned by the local air service right now, isn't it? No. Two um, uniform? Uh, Brad Shostad. No, it's 8-3 uniform. Oh, 8-3 uniform. And, yeah, it's Brad Shostad. That's right, Brad. That's right. Brad's plane. The Super Cub that he no, has? It's a no, it's 185. Oh. Yeah, it's nice. Cool. Yeah, it's a sweet they went, plane. They went yeah. fast. We, uh, Speedy. We flew, flew all over. Um, what would you share about Cordova to anyone, to like a newcomer coming to town? What would you share with it? With well, them? that kind of depends on who it is. Because yeah, if it's somebody, you know, that I think would fit in and would like, you know, <laughs> then I'd share otherwise I tell them oh it rains all the time people are unfriendly we're <laughs> unfriendly that's what I'd tell them if I didn't want them to move here whoa <laughs> <laughs> she's smart you know you just don't want anybody coming you know it was a vetting process <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh let's see what did I tell them well it's a nice place to live I've been here 40 years I think it's pretty nice, but I think I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping into probably some more of our questions that surround our actual, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Project? Yeah, project here. Um, do you, we're trying to connect generations between the old generations and the younger generations, and so we've discovered that there is sort of a gap between those generations, and do you feel that there's a need to connect those generations between the youth and the older community. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. what do you think we could do about that? Or what do you think you could well, do about that? Well, what has to happen is the youth and the elders have to learn to listen to each other and be open-minded. Uh, the elders to remember what it was like maybe when they were that young and decisions they had to make and whatnot. And then they... Uh, yeah, the youth can learn from the wisdom of the of the elders, and the elders need to listen to the youth because they're making the decisions for our future. So it's important now hmm, to fix that. I don't know. Listen more. 
uh, be involved with each other more, do things together. Um, yeah, projects like this are very yeah. good for that. I'm going to just interject. Yeah. What is an activity you think that we could put on that a lot of others would want to come out for? Hmm. Well, everybody likes to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Um, I don't know. I can't. It, can't. it depends on the elders, too, how physically movable they are. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, activities, physical activities are always fun. Uh, baseball game? Well, we had the Nerf gun fight. That was... Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Nerf we did do that. Fight. That'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, we could go to the rifle range. Do you like follow our pumpkin shoot gun? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, video. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned the elders, and so now I'm going to ask you, how does the word old make you personally feel? Wise. Because <laughs> if you've lived that long, God, you know, yeah. God have some. Yeah. you've dodged a lot of bullets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got to have some wisdom there to, to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this next question Olivia wrote down. It's a little. Do you want me to read it? Well, no, I can read it. It's just, <laughs> okay. Um, what decision do you believe has had the most impact on your life? And what do you think your life would look like if you had not made that decision? Oh, a personal decision I made? Mm hmm Hmm. Well, I sure would hate to have life without my kids. So, I guess to have kids. Yeah. That's a good answer, I feel like. And to move <laughs> to Alaska. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that, probably. I mean, you wouldn't have met ton of people I'm assuming yeah right yeah if you hadn't come to Alaska so what do you think your life would be like if you didn't come to Alaska or if you didn't have kids oh that's really hard to say probably boring <laughs> self-centered boring yeah probably have a lot of money and, yeah you know yeah. probably travel yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah have lots of stuff yeah stuff like that has to do with self-centered <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any other questions or do you think I should pause it here for the advice? You should pause it here. Okay. Just, yeah, push the space bar. Okay, I got the space bar. Uh, where's the Something else that flashed through me, I was going to tell you. What was that? Yeah, yeah you can tell us whatever. I can't, I've got to remember it. Any cool stories that you just want to share with us before we pause? We like cool stories. For the second clip? Yeah, we do love cool stories. Mm. That's the fun part. Yeah. Probably had a lot of really interesting jobs in my life. <laughs> Tell us about some of them. What was your first job? My first job was ironing clothes. Got 25 cents an hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, 25 cents a piece. A piece for ironing clothes. Yeah. So I, I, saved them, I saved my money when I was 16, <laughs> rode the train to Chicago and spent a month with my friend there. Oh, you wow. just. Uh -huh. Your parents just let you do that? Yep. Just go to Chicago? Yeah, well, I went to a friend's. Well, yeah. But. Um, I worked at a gold mine, the largest gold mine in North America at the time. It was up on uh, the Denali Highway. He did a double marathon. No, no, the the, uh, mm -hmm. But Denali, the little town of Denali, uh, on the... Oh, it's on the Denali Highway. That's right. I did it just for you ran a double marathon? Yeah. Well, 48 miles. Yeah. Child's Glacier. To me, that's, that's a pretty long definitely a double run. marathon. <laughs> that's like a triple marathon to me. Yeah, yeah that was, isn't a marathon was a, 24 miles? Yeah, that was a highlight. 26. I'm sure doing that. Oh, the other thing I know was uh, I, I gave a birthday party and I invited the whole town. Oh, cool. That was pretty cool. Pretty wow. Cool. You gave a birthday party mm -hmm. for whom? Birthday party for the Million Dollar Bridge. Oh. Oh, yeah. I went how, to that party. 2010. Yeah. I was at that party. How, yeah. So how old was it? 100? 100 years old. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, really? Vaguely yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your I parents were in the party. picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. yeah, that was pretty fun. Cool. I never yeah. thought about throwing a birthday party and inviting a whole town. Well, you brought you're bold. 
I mean, that's pretty bold. <laughs> well, I had to drive 50 miles to get to the party, but... <laughs> oh, I see. That was the editor. <laughs> <laughs> that was the... Uh, can you work. pay gas? That yeah. was the invitation, really. Yeah. Wow. So that, yeah, that was pretty fun. The other thing I was uh, wanted to do for a long time, and I followed through and did it, and that was to nominate... Um, Anita and Dana for the Citizen of the Year. Oh, cool. So I did that. That was a fun thing to do. Yeah, you guys got up the same year. I mean, the same time. Kind of. Yeah. You were like, yeah, it was a double. plural citizens just, of so, the year. They're just yeah. so together when they do stuff. It's like they're married or something. Yeah, I know. It's, it's so weird. crazy. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, I worked at the potato farm. I worked at the gold mine. I worked, oh, I worked for this very strange family in Maine. Uh, yeah, that was, that was very interesting. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I had lots of cleaning jobs in Cordova. One time I had seven part-time jobs. All at once. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Did you ever go bowling at the bowling alley? That was oh, here. Yes. oh I've, yes! Oh I've missed. I've never was never around during the bowling yeah, alley. Right. But I, I wish they never got rid of it. In I've never been bowling. Never ever. Really? You nope. Got a project, young lady. We'll have to go to Anchorage and go bowling. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a lame. You don't go yeah, to Anchorage just to go bowling. In '66, there was a movie theater. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Robbed. I love bowling. <laughs> I've actually never. I've only been five pin bowling. Not no. What is it called? Five pin. Mm. With the little the little bowling balls. Oh. They just That's do that in Canada. Oh, oh is that all <laughs> Canadian? I've never seen. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. No, in America we have these things that fill the gutter even. No, I know, but it's like can't lose but there. I think the ones that I, but I they were little. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I like but this. that's but still boiling. It's still bowling. Yeah. 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 Knocking stuff over. Yeah. You're just a Canadian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't know. <laughs> this is a In 66, they had a movie theater in an old hotel that isn't there now, the Northern Hotel. Mm. And my, when my mom and grandma came to visit, we went to the movie there. Oh, and, you know, we had spilled popcorn on the floor. And when the lights went off, lights come back on. Lo and behold, all the popcorn's gone because it was so full of cockroaches. Ah, oh. the cockroaches. Oh, oh. Tell. Ew. Ew. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, lots of cockroaches in mm. Cordova. They're actually more efficient than raising cattle and pigs. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's a side story we don't have to go into right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> that, was, that was actually just to gross out the two girls. but uh, It didn't seem to affect them much. No, they're pretty tough. Yeah. How big was that movie theater like? Because we have the Kurt Opus in it now, but it's not like a real movie theater mm -hmm. there. And that uh, was specifically that movie only theater, a movie theater. It was probably a little smaller. Yeah. But it was. I remember there were graduated students in it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. 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 yeah, we haven't. I feel like we haven't really had any major like shutdown changes to the town. I mean, the Coho shut down like just the other week. Yeah. That road over Lamar. there got paved. Yeah. Oh yeah, that got that. paved. Yeah. Well, this um, whole area got yeah, um, created. Yeah, created. Well, Cordova Center got built. Yeah. Cordova Center, where Blake the road to washed that out. Was way that was out, way out the way road. Out the road. Yeah. Pete Nepal said he had to walk a million miles to school. Now it's just like right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it's interesting how many old timers, whatever people who were born and raised here, mm -hmm. still here. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. your well, family, your yeah. family. Yeah. And, yeah, her grandpa came with the Coast Guard. Chris is here because of the Coast Guard. So there's a huge influence from that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned that there was no road to the ferry terminal, so that made me think that no, like, Hippie Cove, no Burn Pile, no. Right. None of wow. that, like, yeah, half of, of that town was, was yeah. here. But Orca Cannery was out there, though. Yeah, Orca yeah. Cannery was there. We called it New England, so that was New <laughs> England Road. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Orca Road, I had to learn that. Yeah. So if you're in visiting New England Road. Yeah, and so there. here's a question that's not on your list that you might want to add to the list. Oh. So is it Witch Shed Road or White Shed Road? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. Oh, it's White Shed Road. It has to be. I, th I think it's Witch Shed Road. No. You're wrong. No. And is Witch Shed, was Witch Shed a person? I don't know. But I know Makarka, uh, I think they misspelled it on the maps. 
Macarca Point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they called it Macaca Point. Macaca right? Point. That's right. I think that was. How about Salmo Point? Macaca. I have 1943. I had a chart. It was called Salmon Point. Oh. But they missed Left the end. end. <laughs> they lost the end. So in 44, when they printed the next series of charts, uh -huh. huh. whoever the you know was doing the typing. So which is a typo? Oh, so exactly. it's Salmo. Salmo. And the typo changed it to Salmo. And I wonder if that's the same with White Shed Road. No. If there was a white shed out on it. Yeah, you know? yeah I was just going to ask, like, when you I first got to Cordova, did you pronounce it White Shed or Witch Shed? That's a, that's a really good question. Wait, well, I've, it's always been White Shed. Mm. And, you know, I in had the mile post, I used to do the mile post each uh -huh. year, update it, and they spelled it accidentally S-H-I-T. <laughs> And wrote oh. one year. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Oh, that's nice. I, like that. <laughs> I did have an interesting job when I was here in '66. I worked at the Prince William Hotel, mm. and then mm -hmm. also, next to the bowling alley, um, Pat Jones got me a job doing fishing charts. And back then, fishing game would give you all the. I, maybe they would do the first chart, and they would take all the closures. Um, on all the heads of all the little inlets and bays and stuff, and, you'd, and they'd mark them in red. So then the fishermen would buy these charts, and then they could just, at a glance, see, you know, it was already marked. They didn't have to figure it out, you know, mm -hmm. it was already marked. So, so the, the chart was, uh, they paid, yeah, they, they paid seven fifty for the chart. And I remember being so indebted to Pat Jones because everybody I sold a chart to, she wrote down their name. So then when I realized I had totally left off Night Island on several of the charts, we went back and I called these people and said, I'm so sorry, I'll trade your charts back. And, you know, some of them said, oh, great, I'll they'll be fine. And some of them said, oh, that doesn't matter, I don't fish there anyway. But, yeah. So is it true that you eat dessert first? Absolutely. Just checking. Absolutely. Yeah. And why is that? Well, because, you know, why there not? could be an earthquake or something Just, yeah. happened and you couldn't have dessert. Mm -hmm. so, Sweet things. And besides, too. dessert, sometimes it's hard to take home in a takeout, you know, but yeah. usually salad or some other kind of thing. You take yeah, home salad home. will always be there. Chocolate is... <laughs> so if you were at a restaurant, would you order dessert first or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> done it many times. Um, I want to be a waitress. I want to see a waitress's reaction. Hello, can I have chocolate cake? I've seen it. I it. <laughs> she shocked me. I'm from the middle of America, and it's not acceptable to order and eat dessert for your first. But Deb and I did, didn't we? It shocked me <laughs> he to was no shocked. end. He and was... I was totally thrilled. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm, Robin, I'm still kind of on my heels. I can't believe these girls are that much Oh, growth. no, Deb and Rob are kind of being an item here, and... Maybe maybe this is kind of ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> it was close. If that's that the thing the that test. ruins <laughs> it, then uh, you don't deserve to be together. Does she love her enough to accept her? Oh, yes. She um, loved her enough to accept her faults. So I think... Or is it she loved him enough to accept his faults? I wish I could think of something more concrete on your idea of trying to put people together, you know, put the generation... Well, we, we're just going to pause it so we can... Um, Get together. We're gonna ask you one more question. Oh, yeah, I can't. We're just I pausing it for easier just, on our part. Just talk after that. Yeah. Okay. So that's the end of this one.